Okay, look here, can you spot what is wrong with this weld? As always, when I'm doing anything in regular, everyday life, I'm always looking at the welding on stuff. Warning, something in this episode causes me to have an explosive rage event. You will see the coffee cup in this clip here. However, in this clip from later in the episode, you will notice the coffee mug is now missing. The wall behind me shows damage. So what happened to the coffee mug? And what is it that sends me into a blind rage? Keep watching to find out, but you have been warned. Now, I started having a look around at the welding on the equipment in this gym that I had to use while I was on a trip. I was out on this trip for a week with my family and we were visiting the beautiful town of Penticton, BC. Let's go. First up, what I'm gonna do here is an exercise on the hack squat machine. I'm actually rehabbing a really bad knee injury right now. So I can't go as deep as I normally would go, but I am definitely getting into it here. And finishing up while I'm letting the near blackout fade from my vision, I'm gonna take a look at some of the welding here. Have a look around what do you see with this one have a look at everything we see can you spot it okay I'm gonna freeze it right here and I'm gonna zoom in what do you see take a look this is a welding flaw known as undercut undercut is a welding flaw that can happen for a few different reasons I would probably guess that this was welded standing on end so that this was the bottom edge affected by gravity and this edge here, this was the top edge. Going around a pipe like this presents a lot of new challenges for sure. But like I said, this welding flaw can occur for a couple different reasons that are pretty common. This can be due to incorrect gun angles with wire feed. And again, like we mentioned, we're going around the circumference of a pipe. And this makes these angles even trickier to maintain as you're traveling around something. Incorrect settings can also have a big effect on controlling details like undercut. Another thing that can be common sometimes in combination with incorrect settings would be a travel speed that isn't quite right. As we can see here, the welding hasn't really been centered properly. And going around this pipe, we are essentially doing a fillet joint with this area here. What I can see is looking at the base plate where this flange here is quite narrow to the edge. We can see that the base material thickness is somewhere around one quarter of an inch. We don't really know the diameter of the pipe, but we can definitely see that there is more of the pipe base material than there is from this flange area here. So looking at this joint configuration here, we can definitely understand that the flange area is going to heat up much faster than the pipe. This chunk of pipe is going to be very stubborn and tricky to heat up as much as the bottom flange will be. When you are welding something like this with a flange on the bottom, not only is this bottom plate going to heat up very quickly, because of the position that we just mentioned, we are going to see gravity pull the filler material really low and especially if the welding parameters are not controlled as they should be with settings and technique. We can see that the bottom edge here is nice and smooth. We have a good blended edge between the filler material and the base material. Well, up top we have this hollow ridge where the filler material hasn't really settled all the way up to this edge here. Again, take a look at this detail right here. This is cool. You're going to take a look at the puddle shape. We can see that the puddles are primarily sagging a little bit more to one side, which again would indicate that what we have talked about is probably the case with the errors that we're thinking about. Looking at the beginning of the welding pass, it actually looks pretty good here. We can see that the filler material is primarily settling in the center, but when it comes around the corner, it begins to sag out towards the bottom. Again, like I mentioned, I would probably surmise that torch angle or gun angle would have a lot to do with this. When working on a fillet joint, we always want to make sure that the profile of the weld is centered properly. Take a look at my TIG welding workbook right here. Again, this workbook is completely free. You can download it in the description below. Go get it. We want to ensure that we are using a perfect profile for a fillet weld. We don't want to see the filler material blowing out to one side more than the other. We do not want to see it excessively convex. And anytime we get excessively concave, we just introduce more risk for something like undercut or improper fusion into the base material to occur. Something like this example here is exactly what you want. We can see that the welding profile is perfectly centered, even toes from top and bottom. And if you are practicing the right exercises when you're learning, this is actually easier than you think to learn. I recommend that people learn Hang on, let me grab one. I'm gonna get a joint to show you. I recommend that when people learn to weld a fillet joint like this here, they don't learn it in a 90 degree position like this, they learn it welding in a 45 degree position like this. You can see that I actually have it positioned in a fixture that's gonna hold the joint in a 45 degree angle. Again, not like a 90 degree angle like this. Working and learning how to do a fillet joint in a 45 degree position is gonna help you to learn how to properly center the profile of the joint much easier as well as give you 
much better vision so you can see way clearly, way more clearly, clearlier. When you learn how to properly center the profile, you're gonna make sure that the leg length goes out equally to each side of the joint. After you are confident with getting your results in the 45 degree position, then you can go ahead and start to work on learning this in the 90 degree position. You want the exact same results that you saw with the 45 degree version with the 90 degree version. When you jump ahead to start trying the 90 degree version, if you still see problems with the filler material going to one side more than the other, I recommend to go back and dial things back in with the 45 degree version again, just to make sure everything's perfect with your technique and profile placement like we talked about. Once you get everything perfect, you can then jump ahead to the 90 degree version. When you get comfortable with that, you can then try and go around a piece of pipe that is butted up against a piece of plate material. This is actually one of my favorite joints to do, honestly. However, make sure you are comfortable and confident with running the fillet joint on the plate joint configurations, both 45 degree and 90 degree, like we just talked about. Then once you are confident and consistent with this, go ahead and try it going around a piece of pipe. Now, looking at this here, what else can you see going on with this welding job that we're looking at? Looking around, there's definitely a lot that we could possibly break down, but there's one thing in particular that's driving me nuts. Come on, you had a good look at it. Can you spot it? It's the post weld detailing. Take a look at all the splatter we see everywhere. Full fuck. I know that what we're doing here is most likely wire feed with steel, obviously, but with any welding job we do, there is an aspect of post weld cleanup that we should do. You guys, literally, this takes minutes to take care of and clean up forever, all gone. It takes a couple minutes with a chipping hammer or some kind of a small chisel, I don't even care. After you finish any welding job, you should make sure that stuff like this is gone. Look how much this stuff shows up after it's been painted, it's so blatant. Even if these welds were all run completely perfect, throwing splatter all over them just makes them look like shit. And look at these here, the holes for these fasteners or whatever must go through them, they have a huge amount of rag on them still. Come on, this stuff is sharp. Again, it takes absolutely no time to clean this kind of stuff up. If you're gonna put all the time into getting good work with your welding, dude, take the time to do the cleanup as well. Okay, the set that we saw me doing here on the hack squat machine was admittedly a little bit sloppy, but some of the details about the welding were too. What's this machine gonna be like? Check it out. Okay, we're gonna hit the Smith machine squat here. This gym's air conditioning is not doing a great job in here, but getting through this one, I'm gonna play it cool like I'm not about to fall over. Finishing up here, I'm gonna take a look around as if I'm not about to black out. Gotta say, looking at some of these, these welds look pretty good, man. We see some really nice passes with great edges and consistency, nice work. But I did see something that we can definitely improve on. Did you see it? Take another look here, it's a sneaky one. Having a look around, can you spot it? It would be these areas right here. We can see a few of them, and this would be a category that I would call connections and tie-ins. Now this is seriously one thing I just don't like seeing. It takes such little time to just go the extra half inch or whatever you need to tie these together. And again, looking around, we can see that the welding on this one looks really good. Could you imagine if the planning for each of these welds was to just leave a start back a little bit further? This gives you something that you can tie onto when you go to weld the other side. This improves so much as far as strength or long-term integrity of the joint. Remember, in places like this gym here, there may very well be lots of moisture in the air. This gym is full of hot, sweaty people all the time, for example. This stuff is gonna create condensation in the air, which is going to cause corrosion over time, guaranteed. I know some people may think that this is a bit of a stretch to be critical about this kind of thing in the sake of trying to prevent corrosion on something like this, but it does actually happen. And you know what's even easier? taking the extra two seconds to connect these welds properly. One thing that I recommend people do when they're welding something like this, which is probably assembled in a jig or a fixture or something like that, start with your tacking in areas like this where you know it might be a bit of a stretch to reach. Put your tacks here. It has some extra filler material that will be here for you. It's gonna be much easier to reach in and pull your welding away from it. And then you can weld around the other side and it's much easier to connect to as well. You're gonna see something really interesting with this same point in another exercise here. Hang on for it. Again, lots of 
of love to the welding that we see on this machine. I actually really like a lot of it. The passes look really good, really consistent, and very well organized. It's just little details like this that I find really set somebody's work off. Come on, we wanna show off all the good work that you've done, right? Okay, now, RDLs, let's go. Okay, getting set up with a warm up set here. Pardon my posture, how rude. But getting through these, they are feeling pretty good. So let's set up for some more weight here. But look around with me here. Let's see what we can find here. Well, I'll be, the welding on this setup is banging, wow. Well done with some of this consistency around the pipe welds here, really nice work. And man, what did we just talk about with connections and tie-ins? Look at this, the directions of these passes are opposite to one another. I love how the directions of these are mirrored. Fantastic work. But look at it again, I did find something. And this is so frustrating, it makes me want to spit out my drink and smash something. Can you see what made me so irate? It's not even the welding. It's the stupid detailing after cutting. Look at it. It's razor sharp and this is everywhere on these cutouts. Matter of fact, even as I'm scraping it with my burned, numb, dead fingers, I'm breaking parts of it off with my hand. People, this is so easy to take care of. This drives me nuts. One of these tools right here, this is a deburring tool. Use a Dremel or a die grinder, I don't care. Look at this example here. Obviously I have just cut this tab out from a piece of plate as an example, but I can use a deburring tool like this, nice and smooth. I can use a file like this, also very easy. Or as I said, some kind of rotary tool, I don't care. Here's one trick that I love doing, watch this. I take an old Scotch-Brite angle grinder disc, you can see this one is pretty old, but I'm gonna cut it into quarters, and these are great for using to get into corners or small cutouts for detailing. I understand that deburring every single cutout on a whole tower like this here is going to be for sure really annoying to do, but come on. On when your welding is this good, the simplest oversight with details that are this small just takes away from all the good stuff. Okay, one more exercise here. I'm gonna blast these calves and we are gonna get out of here, go hit the lake. I'm gonna knock out a set here. These are feeling pretty good, I love these. After I'm done, I'm gonna take a little walk around, see what we got here. Okay, awesome, here's something that we can learn from. This one's a lot of fun to break down. And this one is also very important. Look at this area right here. We can see a couple welding stitches on either side of this bracket or whatever it is, but look at this area. What do you see? Anyone? Do you know what I see? Nothing. There is no welding here. And if this was a project that I was doing, this would be wrapped around completely, leaving no exposed end of a gusset or support at all. Let's keep looking around. Here's a good example of what I would like to see. I'd like to see the stitches being carried all the way to the end of a piece like this here, and then having some sort of material like this little tack here, connecting the passes and blending into the base material properly. I understand that this is wire feed that we're breaking down here, but when it comes to stuff like this, the exact same rules apply to any welding process. Someone may take a look at this one here, and they will see that the piece does taper out to a complete point and say they don't want to weld to towards the end of it simply because obviously as you weld towards the end of something like this, it's going to melt away really quickly. This is absolutely correct. However, I have a solution that might actually seem too easy. Do the corner wrap first. Do this little wrap around the end and then as you weld your stitches towards it, it's going to act as a little heat catch to help prevent overheating or the pieces from melting away. This will then connect all of the passes together properly and theoretically you don't have any tie ends or detailing that you have to do later. Look at this welding exercise that I've done here. I love this one. Basically, you can practice your fillet welding like we talked about on either side. But the cool thing about this example is you can cut the top plate a little bit short in comparison to the bottom plate. You can see this example here. And then you can practice your corner wrapping around each end. This is gonna give you a really great example of how to practice this and get this dialed in. Today, for demonstrations, we're gonna use the Canaweld 201 Pulse D. You all love this machine. We all know this machine. This machine is super simple, but it is a workhorse and it is really affordable on a budget. Canaweld is actually offering a rebate program on these machines right now. So if you are thinking about pulling the trigger on one of these machines, now is the time. Go do it.
You can essentially do your welding pass along the side as you would normally. As you finish, you will leave the end open for a tie in, and then you can practice your corner wrap around the end. After you're finished, you will then reposition and get ready to finish the other side. Doing this will teach you a lot of really important practical ways that you can get good about doing what we're talking about here, where you're essentially connecting passes around pieces of material like this bracket or whatever here. Again, seriously, leaving open corners like this can be very prone to uh, cracking or distortion later down the line. Do your planning ahead and take care of these details so it's much easier to deal with as you are welding. Trust me, it makes a huge difference with your results. Now taking a look at things on this side and oh yeah, my wife is here knocking it out of the park as well. Hello. As much as I love checking out babes, I'm actually going to go check out this area here. We can see a piece of pipe that has been cut on a pretty extreme angle. And for those of you who follow my work and the stuff I do on this channel, you will know that this is one of my favorite things to weld. Check out this exercise here. This is one of my favorites. Obviously traveling around the outside of this pipe area here, we can see that the consistency isn't that great. Again, this goes back to the connections like we talked about, but this area is one that will look fantastic if you can get it right. I can definitely understand that things get a little bit tight here, but trust me, it can be done. You can fill this up. I've shown a few tricks that I have up my sleeve for taking care of spots like this. We talked about one earlier, which was putting tacking in this area first. But again, I know I keep talking about it, but it all comes down to planning. Even with some of the tightest spots that I've had to weld, you can see this one here was super tight, but I did get into it no problem. Increasing your gas flow, going with a smaller cup size, and then pulling your tungsten out a little bit further. This will allow you to get away with a much longer stick out on your torch. And you're gonna be able to get through areas like this a little quicker. When you're welding in something that has like a really tight included angle like this, you can afford to have a bit sketchier of a gas setup. Like we talked about, a further stick out on your torch. Simply because in an area like this, the gas is going to be kept into this area, really local to the welding area. If you're welding on an outside corner or something like this, your gas is gonna be swept away. But like I talked about, on an included angle that's tighter, it's gonna keep the gas a little more local. Now typically when I get around the outside, I try and finish somewhere around here. And as well, I need to set up and get comfortable so that I can travel this whole shot around the outside of the angled pipe in one go. This is very visual, we wanna get this right. If you do any stop starts in this area here, it is going to increase the chances of any inconsistency when you flash up for the next welds. Again, like I'm talking about here, it all comes down to planning. I will get set up to do this in as long of a pass as I can do. And what we want to do is something like this example that I've demonstrated here. And again, practicing this around pipe joint fillets is a great way to build this consistency. First, I recommend getting good at doing it around 90 degree cuts around pipe first. And then I would start practicing around an angled piece of pipe like this. And this is where things get really fun. Again, looking around this machine, we can actually see some other stuff that has been done really well around pipe just like this. See how good things can look when you build your consistency. When you run around the outside of a pipe on an angled cut like this, it looks awesome. And when we keep structural integrity in mind and prevent any areas where consistency falls short. Breaking down work that we see out about in the wild is one of the best ways that I like kind of getting feedback on certain things. It helps me develop a lot of skill with my own work. In no way do I ever want to seem like I am picking on somebody else's welding, ever. Again, go download the workbook. It is absolutely free. You can print it out. It's got tons of great stuff for beginners in there. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James. Phil and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.